Hey guys, I'm Becky from Book Bite Reviews and welcome to my tour stop for Katie McGarry's newest release, Only a Breath Apart. This week, Only a Breath Apart by Katie McGarry was released and she is doing a blog tour with Inkslinger PR and they decided to send me a ebook copy of it to read and review for you guys. You guys, I was so, so happy to receive this. I love Katie McGarry. She is just the best when it comes to YA Contemporary, and she didn't fail me with this one either. I will go ahead and read you the synopsis real quick because it does a much better job describing what this book is about than what I have come up with. Best-selling author Katie McGarry's trademark Wrong Side of the Tracks romance is given a new twist in the gritty YA Contemporary novel Only a Breath Apart. Jesse Lachlan is cursed. So the town folklore says. But while Jesse's had his fair share of tragedy, the only curse he believes in is his grandmother's will. In order to inherit his family farm, he must win the approval of his childhood best friend, the girl he froze out his freshman year, Scarlett Copeland. Scarlett Copeland is psychic. Glory Gardner tells Scarlett she has hidden psychic abilities, but Scarlett thinks Glory is delusional. What is real is Scarlett's father's irrational fears, controlling attitude, and the dark secrets at home. Scarlet may have a way to escape, but there's a hitch. She'll have to rely on the one person she used to trust, the same boy who broke her heart, Jesse Lachlan. Each midnight meeting pushes Jesse and Scarlet to confront their secrets and their feelings for each other. But as love blooms, the curse rears its ugly head. So let's first talk about our main characters, Scarlet and Jesse. I really, really enjoyed these characters, you guys. I felt like they were such a good match for each other. I could understand why they were friends when they were little, why they've reconnected now, and why they still have this friendship. For one thing, both of them are very misunderstood by their town. They have two polar opposite reputations, but they both still are not exactly what their reputations say they are. So Jesse has that bad boy, wrong side of the tracks, reputation. He has been arrested. He's been um, found with possession of drugs. And the town just has this very bad outlook of Jesse and his entire family. His grandmother has just passed away and the town kind of thought of her as like this crazy recluse. And everyone just assumes the worst of Jesse, but he actually has a heart of gold. Scarlett is looked at as the perfect girl who is rich, has this amazing family, and is an ice queen because she never has any feelings. She doesn't go out with anybody. She's part of the popular club, but she does not put herself out there in any way, shape, or form. This book is told in alternating points of view, which you all know is my favorite. I think it's the best way to tell a romance between two characters. And I really, really enjoyed it. I loved seeing both of their points of view on what was happening, not only when it came to their romance, but also to what was happening outside of them. I did find myself rooting for both of them. I usually kind of have like a favorite character and I just really, really enjoyed them both pretty equally. I really don't think I could pick whose story I liked better or who was more interesting. I found them both to be very, very compelling characters. One thing that I definitely found interesting is that Jesse is a red-haired boy and my family is red-haired on my mom's side and I just think it's so funny with like all like the stigmas of gingers that our main lead boy is a red-haired male and I thought that was so so cool because I don't think I've ever seen it before and I just found it very interesting. She, it's definitely not something that's like mentioned one time at the beginning and then he's never described again. Like Scarlet is always talking about his red hair and describing him with that. So it's always like pushed into the reader's face again and again that we have this red haired male lead. And I thought it was just really, really cool because I don't see it done often. Gingers have a bad rep. And I just really, really enjoyed that little tidbit to throw in there and not just be a brown haired, blue eyed boy. So now let's go ahead and talk about the romance between Scarlett and Jesse. I think it was really well done. It is not insta lovey, but it is like pretty fast paced. They were childhood best friends. They did always have feelings for each other, but never express them. And then Jesse decided to shut Scarlett out for reasons that I will not tell you. You will find out when you read the book. 
now because of Jesse trying to get his land back he has to befriend Scarlet again and Scarlet kind of needs Jesse whether she wants to admit it or not so they do begin to have this friendship again which it hasn't been that long since they were friends so it's not like that crazy that they would decide to become friends. Scarlet definitely is pretty untrusting not just because of Jesse but also because of what is happening in her personal life so it wasn't like we're not friends now we're friends. It was pretty well done. There definitely is some trust issues between them so it felt very natural and real. Like I said, it's not insta-love because they did have these feelings beforehand and they do talk about that, about how they had these feelings when they were children. But when they decide to be friends, they decide to be friends. And they really begin to like fall back into what they used to do when they were children. So it is pretty fast paced. And when they decide to take it to the next level, again, it's kind of like zero to 100. Not like all the way 100. There is really only making out happening in this book but it's just kind of like the one night they did kiss and they decided to not let that change anything and just go back to being friends the next day which that does happen in real life but then the next time that they kiss it's kind of like okay are we friends or are we not again pretty realistic and then it's like okay we're not friends we're more than that and we're just going with it so it is like not super fast paced. It's believable, but it is kind of like not very slow of let's learn to trust each other fully. It's kind of like, let's just go with our feelings. We are teenagers. We have raging hormones and let's just see where it goes while also being cautious at the same time. I hope that that like romance rant kind of made sense. Next, let's go ahead and talk about these side characters. So Katie McGarry always does a fantastic job with her side characters. They're always very well developed, really, really good. And they usually have like side stories that we want to hear more about and we don't and for very good reason. So the first one I want to talk about is Jesse's uncle Marshall. He is not technically family. He was married to Jesse's aunt who has passed away and he is still in Jesse's life. They, to say a turbulent relationship is like such an understatement. These guys like seriously hate each other. By the end of this book, that relationship is resolved. I really, really loved what ended up happening between Jesse and Marshall. I think Marshall is the perfect person to be in Jesse's life. And I think that they really did earn each other's respect by the end. And the last side character that I would like to talk about is V. This is Jesse's best friend. I do think it's kind of funny that like all these side characters really happen on Jesse's side. But that's because he doesn't have any problems with the people who are currently in his life, whereas Scarlet, all the people in her life are like pretty bad. So it does kind of make sense why they're all Jessies. But V is Jessie's best friend and she has a bunch of stuff going on behind the scenes that we don't get to know. V is pretty interesting. There are a lot of hints from things that V says and hints at and like how in the background all this stuff is happening to V, but we don't ever like fully dive in like it's mentioned like hey we got to go do this for V but then Jesse and Scarlett go off and so it's kind of like but wait what the heck is happening with V I want to know more about that I think it is a hint that V is going to be getting her own story Katie McGarry always does this she comes out with these amazing books and she comes out with these great side characters and she hints at them but doesn't give us enough to go off on where like if the book just ended there we'd be okay she usually takes those side characters and then gives them their own book and usually all the books in her series follow each of the different characters while touching on ones that we've already seen in the past. So I'm pretty sure that V is going to be getting her own book, which I'm super excited about. I'm really hoping I'm right. Pretty sure I am because this is what Katie McGarry does and we will only see. I will only briefly touch on the plot of this book because I do not want to give you any spoilers, but I will say that it is a pretty dark plot. It mostly follows Scarlet, but it touches on Jesse's dark past, and that is abuse at home. Scarlet is dealing with this, and that is like the main plot, is that everyone thinks she's this perfect girl, but she has this very, very terrible relationship happening with her parents, and nobody knows about it. I think it was very well done. It definitely wasn't always bad, and I think that's how it is in real life if you are dealing with abuse one minute it's awful and the next minute they say that they have changed and everything's going to be great and then you go through this period of like walking on eggshells because you know that they haven't really changed 
but you're not sure and then they kind of convince you that they have and then something happens again. So I think it was very well done. I don't think any of it felt unrealistic or too far-fetched. Like I think it was so so well done. Like at one point everything was like going perfect in Scarlett's life and I did post an update on Goodreads saying that I'm about 70% of the way through the book and everything has been like really good so far with Scarlett and I know that the other shoe is about to drop and I'm so scared to turn the page because I know at any minute stuff is gonna blow up. Like in the beginning we do hear about these bad things happening to Scarlett. We do kind of witness it. There's like all these little times where we kind of see small pieces of this abuse going on. But then everything is perfect. We've changed. Everything's gonna be great. Scarlett, you're the only one who has a problem now and you need to learn to forgive and get over it. It's the past. Like I just slowly saw like this is too good to be true. Like, I really hope that her father has changed, but I really don't think so. I really don't think so. And then finally it happens. I'm just like, oh, I knew it. I was hoping it wouldn't happen, but I knew it. It is really well done. It is pretty dark, but you know me. I love darker YAs, and I do feel like this could have went a tad more darker, a tad more pushing the envelope, and I think I would have liked it a tad bit more if it would have, but... The way that it is done is pretty good and I didn't seem to have a problem with it. I just wanted more. My legs are falling asleep. Oh, can I just sit like all the way down? Can we do that? The last thing we will talk about are the holes that I did find with the book. Things that either I had a problem with or I could see people having a problem with. So the first one is that I was slightly concerned with Scarlett and Jesse's relationship. It is a good relationship. Now that it's all over, I do think it is a healthy relationship and one that they both can benefit from. But in the beginning, as it was going on, I was a little worried that maybe Scarlett was kind of turning into her mom. Not that Jesse is abusive in any way, but just for the fact that Scarlett had to kind of depend on Jesse in order to help her get out of the situation. And I felt like, come on, what's the message here? That we always need a man in order to get ourselves out of something or in order to be independent. We still have to be dependent on a man. Like, I... <sighs> I had a problem with it and I was like, I don't really know if I like where this is going. Not sure how I'm going to like the ending because I feel like Scarlett is depending a little too much on Jesse. What it ended up turning out was not exactly that. So I am pretty happy with it. That is not the message that it does send. I think what the message ended up being is that you really have to rely on yourself to get you out of the situation. That only you can make a change in your life, that you have to make that choice and make that decision. But at the same time, you do need help. And there are people out there who are willing to help you and who do care about you. You're not alone in the world. And if you do have a negative situation going on, there are people who are willing to help you. You just have to reach out. So I think Jesse was just one of those people in Scarlett's life who was willing to reach out his hand and help her. It just so happens that he is a boy and just so happens that they end up having a romantic relationship and not that you need a boy in order to have a good life or that you can't do anything on your own as a woman. And I think more of the message was you need to be accepting of help. Maybe you can do it all on your own and that's totally fine, but if somebody's willing to help you, don't just push them away. The next one is that I felt the paranormal aspects of this book were not touched on enough. As you heard in the description, Glory does tell Scarlett that she has some psychic abilities and Glory ends up helping her kind of develop those. It's very, very lightly touched on. It's like very, very low in the hierarchy of plot lines of this book. And I kind of felt like it wasn't really a psychic ability, but more of just like intuition and learning how to read palms and learning how to read people. So I kind of wish that it either would have like went full out and been a paranormal ability and we learned all about it or that it just like wouldn't have been touched at all as far as Scarlet having it. Scarlet ends up getting a job with Glory and she didn't necessarily have to have psychic abilities in order to do that job. So I kind of felt like the whole psychic ability was like just like an added little bonus in there for the reader, specifically me because I like paranormal YA. 
So I felt like it was just like another little like sugar cube that Katie McGarry threw me in the story to have a paranormal aspect, but I don't think that it was fleshed out enough. The last little negative, I guess you would say, that I will touch on is the ending. The way that this one ends is that things are going pretty well and then Jesse kind of throws another curveball at Scarlet. It was like pretty traumatic and heartbreaking to me. It ends up getting resolved by the end, but I was just like, are you kidding me right now? Like, Scarlet doesn't need this. I don't need this. This is not healthy for us. It is really well done. I do like how the characters end up communicating in the end. It goes to Jesse and Scarlet communicating via email for a little bit. And I really enjoyed that. I love when books have artifacts in them, you know, letters, texts, emails, things like that. I find it very interesting to read those kind of things because I feel like it's so much more genuine coming from the character instead of just being in their head, but to see their thoughts out on paper that they then send to somebody. I really enjoy that. So for a little bit, they end up communicating that way. And I really enjoyed it, but I was just like, seriously, Jesse, seriously, I don't know. But it does end up kind of being all well in the end. The way that it ends is kind of like, okay, now let's start our relationship full on, roll the credits, and not like, and now we're happily married and have children and everything's great. We're never going to leave each other. Like, I wanted that kind of ending. I want to know that everything's okay, and I don't really. But at the same time, V is going to get her book. I'm telling you, V is getting a book and we will touch on Jesse and Scarlet then and see that everything is okay. So overall, I am going to give this book four out of five stars. I usually end up giving Katie McGarry's books five stars, but I do feel like this book just, I don't know what it was. I can't explain it to you, but I feel like there was just something missing. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what exactly was missing, but I just felt like this was really good, but not like amazing earth shattering. I am deciding to be much more tough when it comes to giving my ratings. I would really like to reserve my five star rating for books that completely blow my mind and are my next favorite. So I think from now on I'm going to be giving a lot of books four stars and I think that's why I ended up giving this four stars. It's just because I really really loved it but this isn't my new favorite. It definitely is fantastic. I don't feel like there's much wrong with this book at all. So I'm going to be giving this four out of five stars. For the tour, Inkslinger PR also decided to send me a excerpt, which I will be posting on my blog. So go ahead and go down into the description of this video and you will find the excerpt. Be sure to go ahead and hit the like button for me if you could, if you enjoyed this video. Please also go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Hit the notification bell if you would like to be notified every time that I make a video, which I make at least one a week, usually on Fridays. That is everything that I have for you guys. I really, really hope you end up picking up Only a Breath Apart by Katie McGarry. It was really, really good, you guys. And if you've never read a Katie McGarry book, this is like the perfect one to start out with. So I will see you guys in the next one. Bye. Oh!